So there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. You know, the DOD's A and P program versus the prep course, the cool program, prep courses, pros and cons compared to the Part 147 schools, the A and P process. You know, when you have experience like most of us do, uh, and then some study materials. Knucklebusters, I'm Z from Coda Maintenance. Thank you for joining my uh, my uh, video here, and uh, I plan to talk about the the prep courses, the the different resources that's available to you, the, the different type of programs out there. So please, uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our page on on Facebook, Code One Maintenance. I'll be providing a link to our audio podcast so that way you can listen to it on your drive and things like that and give you updates. And it'll be a, a new source so that way when you go on, on your way to work, come back from work, you can listen and get some little updates. We're gonna, I'm gonna be talking about the industry, uh, what it's gonna be like, the resources available to you, talking about the pros and cons of different uh, resources out there that's available to you and it's free for you so again please like subscribe share it with your buddies who uh, increasingly more and more we're getting people asking questions and there's some rumors that they may dispel and i know it's going to be a long road to dispel some of the old policies that was in place late last year and they got changed uh, earlier this year or late very late last year you know, share this information. I want to dispel as much of the uh, rumors or some, you know, uh, grow the awareness of the old policies. They only live for a short period of time, but we continue to talk to students. And part of the process, every time I talk, you know, somebody enrolls, uh, we started implementing talking to everybody. Uh, not to bug you, but, you know, just to get a more understanding of who you are. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to watch and we need more people sharing this information because it's super valuable. We all know that the computers on, on your government computers really are slow, patched up with tons of security. I know AFIC, uh, I've talked to them. There are a lot of hard workers in that office from Air Force Cool, a and program. A lot of people was trying to distribute this information and. I'm here to help them out and grow the awareness as well. I have uh, a few talks with them. I plan to grow the awareness of their program along with ours, and hopefully we can create that partnership. It's nothing official, so don't go haywire on it. We've had people like that, uh, you know, you know, just on their own little uh, wagon with that stuff, but always trying to the bottom line is, is to always help out military members, right? So I started, I opened the doors for Kona maintenance back in March of 2019. So it's only been a couple of years and a couple of months since we opened up. So our main mission here is to help out military aircraft technicians have a successful post military life. Uh, not everybody's gonna stay in it, a lot of people don't uh, have a, this lifetime career with the, with the military. Most of us, we retire, we get out, going with our second stage of our life. And, you know, we're pretty young. A lot of us are very young. I know some of you feel like because you're aircraft maintainers, you get out and you feel like you're 60 years old. And, and in a way that you can feel that way, but you're super young. You're 37. Not, not a lot of us are over 40 years old when we get out of the military. So there's a lot of life left. You got a lot of tread in your wheels to have another career. Some people have a second career and retire and then still continue to have a third career after that. That's awesome. But uh, the reason I started Cobra Maintenance is because back in 2005, 2006, the Air Force was drawing down forces. I had just been in the military for a year and some change. 
And a lot of my friends were affected by this drawdown. And some guys were not getting their CGAs, CGRs, I'm sorry. And usually those are automatic. You get CGR automatically approved, boom, you're in your second enlistment. But a lot of my friends who are in their first enlistment didn't get automatic. These were great leaders, great mentors to me, great mechanics. And it's just unfortunate that their number didn't get accepted for a second term. So a lot of them got out, went to go and do their thing. They didn't really know what to do. They thought that, hey, the Air Force is gonna, you know, be, you know, be my career for 20 years or whatever the case may be. But for a lot of them, they they had to move on. They didn't have a choice. The, the Air Force were on their drawdowns and the Air Force had to meet their quota. And so the way that affected me was even though that I was getting out in a year or two years, I was already looking for jobs. I was looking at all my options, knocking on doors at, at employers, looking at the reserves, looking at the guard, looking everywhere. And I, I personally I loved working on F-16s. It was my goal to come in. My goal of the Air Force was come in, be an aircraft mechanic, because I thought jets, especially war machines like this, were awesome to work, you know, to, to be around with. Uh, I wanted to travel. And it was never really meant to be something that I wanted to retire from. I just wanted to get the experience. I wanted to experience the military. I wanted to deploy. I wanted to travel outside of the you know deployment areas live in you know these countries that i've always heard about when i was in high school that was those were my main goals um was not thinking of retiring but i knew that if if i joined the military check the boxes off that i would have a a good decent job getting out and i'm originally from texas so fort worth uh, the Lockheed Power Plant in Fort Worth was a great employer to work for. I had a cousin that worked there already. I was definitely going to just slide in. Well, I was already looking at that, and I had a gig there. But I wanted to, I always had like to lay out my options. Always, wanted, uh, I was always that type of guy to have those options. So, <laughs> you know, when I started knocking on the door, it was too early. So. I was like, I was like, hey kid, you got one year left. You know, come back to us in a few months and you know, then we can talk. So I was like, you know, okay, but that's how much I it affected me because I saw my friends and they they stayed in the local area and I went to go visit them. I saw them at a Home Depot, you know, wearing their orange vests and stuff like that. No, I wasn't there trying to get a job either. <laughs> uh, you know, that whole uh, stereotype there. But, you know, I, that's how uh, some of these mechanics are. They're smart asses and goofballs. But no, I wasn't there trying to look for a job or anything like that. And I was actually there, you know, I had to go meet up these, with these friends. And they were, you know, they're talking to me about their post career, you know, trying to make ends meet. They were, definitely not happy and not that there's nothing wrong with with home depot it's just a stepping stone for them to get uh, started in their second life they were going to school they were trying to knock out school living on the uh, gi bill with and we, we all know that you can't live off the gi bill which you make and but it can definitely be be helpful and but so that that's always affected me Again, I keep saying that is because it stuck to me my entire career. It's like, dang, Air Force, just like that, can just get rid of you or not accept you. And I, you know, we always think that they're that the government gigs are a little more safer, but you know, when they want to draw down, they'll draw down, and they get they'll find any means necessary. They'll do voluntary, involuntary, and I actually supplied three drawdowns. 2006, 
uh, what else? What was another one? 2012 was another one. Maybe I think I did two, three. I know for sure. 2006, 2012. So, yeah. Um, I guess it's just two. Sorry, my bad. And yeah, they will take away benefits. They've done education benefits taken away. Just recently, you know, 2020, they took away the not paying for prep courses. So, you know, Air Force gets creative when they want to draw down their forces. And I definitely want to be prepared. I wanted to be prepared, so I invested in myself. I try to get all the skills, skills that I was already talented at. Like, I've, I've always been good in business, uh, and I just need to step up the game. Right? I had the talent, and it was just in my DNA, so I just needed to, you know, work on that part, polish that those skills. So towards the end of, let's say, 2018, you know, to the, you know, 2017, born in 2018, you know, I knew about aircraft maintenance certifications and I knew that, that this was, this was great. And why doesn't anybody talk about this? 14 years in the military, nobody talked about it. Why is nobody talking about AMP, the Graal, uh, any other, you know, skills that I can use? And there was not a lot of talk. So I wanted to change that. I've already been dabbling with marketing and I noticed that schools like Code One doesn't, uh, don't have a ad budget. I know because I talked to a lot of them. And so I wanted to change that. Uh, I know Earth Affic has been trying to promote it on their the portal and where they can, but they're obviously they're not active in social media. So, you know, nowadays everybody's on social media. So we have our phones just glued to us. And, you know, just like you need to go to Cruci's when you're waiting for your plane or, you know, you you taxi it out, you launch it out, uh, you're on your phone, you're checking out, you know, most young guys, you know, they're checking out Instagram and checking out Instagram models and stuff. So uh, if, if I wanted to use the skills that I had to reach out to, and grow the awareness that, hey, a lot of you guys have, and ladies, have the skill that all you need to do is really just do a little prepping, a little bit of uh, studying, well, actually a lot of studying, but you get the idea that you can test out and get a certification that can help you, you know, you know uh, be more marketable, uh, more opportunities open up, and and not having to really take these overseas gigs that uh, a lot of my friends did they'll get out and take a, a lucrative overseas gig but they're away from their family and what i what i wanted to do is that hey why you don't have to do this overseas gigs there's gigs here you know you might have to move to that you know the look most lucrative ones but uh, you can do it in the States and those opportunities are out there. So once I did the research of this, I, I felt like this is my calling. I have decent skills at marketing, decent skills at business and what the military, the skills that we don't really think of being disciplined, uh, being on time with things and really overcoming our comfort zones has really, with those skills all combined, has really helped me build Code One. And it's given me, you know, what I got from the military is giving me the guts, the courage to start my own business and helping. And it makes it so much easier to help people like myself having the same problems I did and, 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 and a job that there's a lot more opportunities if you wanted to, if you have aspirations to be in in aircraft maintenance, whether it's just something to uh, fall back on because the Air Force pays for, or the military, the DOD pays for a lot, a lot for you to be successful in your post uh, military career. So that's, and that's why I built Code One. And what's unique about Code One, it's gonna be is that 
we're going to do, we're going to reach you somehow. We're going to find a way to reach you and not only make sure that you get your AMP, but we're going to have other certifications. And then on top of that, uh, hopefully we can help you get a, a gig, you know, keep, bring their awareness like, hey, you know, airport, you know, in Kentucky, uh, across from Cincinnati, Louisville, I'm not familiar with area. I'm sorry if I get all that messed up, but they're hiring. UPS, Amazon Hub is growing there and they want military mechanics. So this is the stuff that I want to uh, grow the awareness on. I was like, there is several employers out there looking for aircraft mechanics. And they specifically want military aircraft mechanics because the guys have done the work before. I know how to follow the instructions. You're proven to do that and do great work under harsh conditions, whether uh, being deployed and rockets flying over and you're, you can be called on a dime. They, you're, you're flexible to change. And that's what they're looking for. And no knock on the 147 kids, but you guys are proven. You have the experience. So you have an upside compared to somebody that's just coming out of college. Uh, again, no knock on the 147 guys. It's just, this is what I get from employers, from director of maintenance, uh, maintenance managers, and even the uh, economic development centers at, uh, across the country. At, you know, we talk and try to, you know, we talk about the need for aircraft mechanics. And then the pool that they're going into is the military mechanics. And there was a survey back in 2018 from the Government Accountability Office. And it says that, that of all the newly certificated AMPs out there in 2018, only 10% was military or a veteran. So my mission is to bring those numbers up, grow the awareness show that there's value in this. And especially if you're aspiring to be aircraft mechanics, I get it. I was in the military, you know, there's tons of dumb politics in the military and you want to get out. Here's an avenue. If you love, and I've met great, amazing mechanics who are a whiz, but they didn't like the military. It wasn't a type of lifestyle they wanted. They were more family oriented. And it's like, hey, I did my part in the military and I want to get out, have a little more stability. And, you know, that, and I, I want to provide that opportunities. And that's, that's our main goal here is to provide opportunities, is to create another path. And there's several lucrative, you know, uh, jobs out there. And, I, you know, some, uh, some of the stuff I get is, you know, if they're going to be rich or something like that, being an aircraft maintenance, no. But you can definitely have a very comfortable life being an aircraft mechanic, doing something you love. I wouldn't recommend being an aircraft mechanic if you think you're going to be rich, but you'll have a very comfortable life. So off that soapbox and a little bit about us. So there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. You know, the DOD's a &P program versus the prep course, the cool program. Prep courses, pros and cons compared to the part 147 schools, the AMP process, you know, when you have experience like most of us do, uh, and then some study materials. So let's go into the DOD's AMP program. I've had this question before and the, the difference between the, that program and what we do prep courses. And it's really not like, uh, you know, this is better than the other. It's not. If anything, it can probably enhance your experience in a prep course. So uh, I've gained I gained a lot of knowledge in the DOT's AMP program because I had a friend that I've deployed with who ended up becoming uh, one of the, the program managers up there. And Dave Chamberlain, who is our director of training, was one of the founding members of the DOT's uh, AMP program. So I've got some insights on that. And I actually, when I was in the reserves in my last year, I dabbled in it to see, you know, what's it about and, uh, and how we can provide value. So the DLD AMP program is a 
FAA recognized program that can accelerate you to, or not really accelerate, but it can help you provide uh, some of the knowledge you learn in a part 147 school. And if you want to see what kind of task or what some of the subjects you'll be learning in this program or in the a &P program, or even in an interview with, a, with an FAA, highly recommend Googling part PR, PART 147 appendixes B, C, and D. So they will break down to the general airframe and power plant. And it gives you a, a list of tasks uh, a FISDO would like you to know about. And again, you don't have to be 100% proficient on these and you don't have to know everything about them. Uh, I, I believe I, if I looked in the regs, it's 50% that you'd be knowledgeable on things. And, and, and the FAA inspectors and I'll say, hey, I recommend you looking into this stuff. And uh, and you should, you just dabble with it. But the DOD uh, program, the DOD's a and program, will, it will give you chapters um, for you to study. You'll read it, read some of the concepts and understand some of these concepts and you'll just read it. And at the end of that, chapter you'll have a 10 question quiz again it's been over a year but that was the latest update that i received from my buddy who was the uh, program manager and heading this uh kind of a redo on the, of this program and it's great and a total it's a great knowledge to go through the books you accomplish this uh the reading in the quizzes then in the next step you'll go and you'll talk to all these different AFSCs like sheet metal, how to do some of these tasks. And then you'll have an E6 or above sign it off or another AMP sign it off once you accomplish these tasks. So it's getting, getting yourself into the mix of these tasks is gonna be great for to prepare you for a prep course and the orals and practicals with a DME. And all this is free. This is free for you to do. Should I take the time? It's not a bad path at all. It's actually pretty great. If, and if you want to get into the nuts and bolts of things, uh, because in a prep course, it's fast paced. It's super fast. And you're really not, you, you are learning things, but not in the pace you want. You know, you're going to be learning things really fast. And it's, it could be overwhelming. It's all day, all night studying, and and a, you might have to do some of these tasks. Like here, we, you know, if you didn't feel comfortable with the project that we did, we go over it so you can be proficient in it. And instead of just running you through, and some guys they pick it up really fast, but if you don't get it just before your test, you know, we can go over some of this task. That's the great thing about the size that we have is that we can make that time and go back and we also have videos so you can learn. So it's, it's late at night and nobody's around. You can you know check out our videos. But the DOD's AMP program is gets you in the books, quiz yourself after each, after each of those chapters. And then you have an opportunity to go perform some of these tasks. Uh, I don't know how many tasks there is, uh, that the Air, this program has you to do, but it's a great program. And then after you're done with this program, you could uh, get your FAA form 8610-2, but I think they just revised it. They'll send you a certificate, a uh, certificate of eligibility, and it'll have all the seals from the branches and this diploma looking uh, certificate. And you can use that to go into the, uh, the test centers. Everywhere you go, you need to have an uh, FAA approved documentation, whether it's the COE, Certificate of Eligibility, or your FAA Form 8610-2, AKA tickets. So like I said, the prep course, the prep course is fast paced. Some of these are two to three weeks long, and it's a lot of studying. And 
you're not going to know everything about it. Uh, a little Cessna 172. The, the prep cores are perfect for people who really don't care about what's the content. They just want to pass their exam and get their certificate so they can go back to work on their uh, multi-million dollar aircraft. But there are some guys who want to work on bug beaters, work on sets. And let me tell you, super simple aircraft, super simple, like easy to work on. It's like working on an, in a 50s Chevy. Simple, simple systems, nothing really complex. And if you have a chance to go work on some of these, you know, get some practice, go get some experience, go work on it. And if you want to take the 147 school, go ahead. It's, you know, if you're, if, if you want to get into that deep down into it, you can, but if you, if you're the type who want to go work on a, uh, a very highly advanced aircraft, uh, maybe it's not for you to, to go 147 school because they don't really dive deep into that stuff. And going into a prep course just to get in, get out, you know, those, if, if you're the type that wants to go back and work on multi-million dollar aircraft just to get a certificate to satisfy the, what the employers are looking for, a prep course is perfect for you. And even if you're not a strong studier, it might, you might just be prepared that um, you might take a couple of extra tests because, you know, these, it's, very, very uh, overwhelming the information that you have to study. And we, we typically try to work with people to give them extra days, couple of days to, to do that because it could be stressful taking multiple tests on the same test and then coming back with your, you know, your tail between your legs that, you know, I uh, didn't get the, I didn't pass the first time. And that's something that we are really working on to minimize that part minimize the, the, the failures on the first exams. So that's some of the differences. Prep courses, in and out, knock it out. All right, cool program. For the Army and for the Air Force, they do pay for prep courses. The policies have changed, especially since you know, the beginning of 2021. Air Force reversed their decision to pay for prep courses. Around July of 2020 up to December, uh, they, have, they have taken that away and only paid for test exams. And we're not paying for FA exams. But as of late December, but to be safe, January 2021, they reversed it and said, we will pay for prep courses. And for the Air Force Cool, you have $4,500 lifetime. So you have $4,500 that is given to you to pursue maintenance certifications. That's AET, Graal, AMP, and whatever other certifications are out there for sheet metal. Um, and you can just go on Air Force Cool, check what's what you're eligible for on your, um, on Air Force Cool, because they have, if you're eligible and they'll, Put your AFSC, it brings a list of all the AFSCs that you're eligible for. I highly recommend taking advantage of that. And, you know, and then sometimes you're gonna be, uh, you might run out. And this is not for me to take your money, anything like that. View this as an investment, invest it in yourself. Because the more uh, certifications you have under your belt, one, you were exposed to more stuff. For example, AMP, as a crew chief, I wasn't exposed to crew, uh, sheet metal. I wasn't really exposed to multimeters. But when I, even during the prep courses, I learned. I learned, even though we probably won't do too much of it in the outside, but uh, bending, bending tubes and stuff like that. I thought it was pretty neat, the whole formula. And, you know, you know I learned a little more when Dave came on board of the whole formula. I was like, holy crap. Uh, I didn't even learn that when I was going through the course, but and now they've probably brought out that little more technical stuff. Sorry, well, I just hit the uh, microphone. And knowing that was pretty cool. I was like, oh, I wish I knew that in the military. Or 
knew how to drill uh, screws out. Man, imagine the time that I would have saved waiting for for uh, sheet metal. You know how many long nights I had waiting for those guys. You know I would cuss here, but I'm not, I'm trying to keep the cursing to a minimum. But man, it really makes me want to curse so bad. Waiting on sheet metal or metal tag, whoever it is, that guys are the same. I don't care what I say. And I'll, I know I'll get grief about this, but if I would do, I would have got my jobs done faster. I would have got had a lot more earlier nights. It's a game changer. And once I learned, I was I remember I was working phase, and a lot of nights or days would be waiting, or I'll get a job. I'll come in the next day. The job's still waiting, still pending because you know. Uh, and this would help out sheet metal. This would help out sheet metal if if we were versed in the in the knowledge how to do this. You can say you can make it just for sound levels, but this skill is super important for mechanics to learn because it's just we can be a little more efficient, a little more uh, valuable on the outside when we gain that AMP. Uh, even as uh, an airman or a you know, sailor or, or a, uh, a soldier, learning how to take something out so simple like that and get our job done faster. I'm impatient. I don't want to leave my job to somebody else. I really hate that. So I like to knock my job out. I have a mission, I want to knock it out. I don't want no, nobody else to do it. Um, so, you know, those are some of the things I learned in the AMP. So back to the cool program. As of this year, 2021, Air Force will pay for prep courses. Uh, I still talk to students who, who say that uh, it's not paid for, but it is. And please share this. I'll make a little cut for this, share this information. Halfway through this video, Air Force does pay for prep courses. All right, cool. For the Army side of things, what I understand is that you have $4,000 every year to pay for maintenance certifications. Take advantage of that. You know, uh, there's a high, higher rate of people getting out and moving on, working on helicopters. And it's a great gig. They need helicopters. Um, they're looking for that. You guys are hard workers and they look for, you know, army guys who or army soldiers who can work in tight places. They're looking for, for your type. And, you know, no, you know, it's, it, it's a new program. So this is why I'm making this video. So that way you can share this, you can provide this information. It used to be where you get reimbursed and I've dealt with that before too. But now there's credentialing assistance and they pay for everything up front. And I actually like their program a lot better. I feel like there's a more connection with me and the army and there's a onboarding process with us and also with the soldier. And there's a lot of education centers assistances that will help you out and uh, guide you along through. And I've had great experiences with, with some of these uh, education centers on base. Cool programs do pay for uh, prep courses and take advantage of that. Not really taking advantage of it, it's for you to use. Sign up, knock out some education. Certifications do come with, with credits, our girl, nine credits, 80, five credits towards your CCIF or, or any kind of uh, related degrees. Uh, and your AMP that I know of for the, for the airmen, you get 30 to 32 credits. So check that again with your, with, with your education office, but I haven't heard anything otherwise. You get 30, 32 CCF credits. That really knocks out half your schooling. And if you get it done in two weeks, instead of taking months and semesters out of school, you can knock out half your associate's degree getting your AMP. 
All right, so that's some G's whiz for you guys. All right, so the next topic I'm gonna talk about is prep, prep courses, the pros and cons. Pros and cons. A lot of them are two to three weeks. It's a lot of information and you're studying all day, all night. What I tell a lot of students is, um, especially if I'm talking to them on the phone before they come, I try to warn them about all this because I don't want, I definitely don't want to be cursed at. I get cursed at sometimes when students come to class and they were not expecting this at all. And so I try to warn them now before they come in. So it's a lot of information. There's a lot of studying and I do my best to help you how to retain some of this information, how to explain some of the concepts, some tips on the exams. And it is just very overwhelming. Uh, if you're a strong student, it's not a problem for you. If you're a decent student, not a problem for you. If you're not a strong student like I'm not, I had to have hours, hours of consultation from a memory champion. And there's a video that I made with him uh, on YouTube. So if you want to get some tips and advice on how to study, uh, go to that video and I'll, I'll post it up. So that way you can easily click on it. But pros, if you, you know, depending on your goals and you're just trying to get your certificate so you can go work for FedEx, perfect. Go do your two weeks, knock it out, and get your certificate so you can satisfy that in and get, you know, gain some money with that. Do it. And a lot of us, Cruchis especially, are we want to know the nuts and bolts of everything. And you just got to think about your time. No, no knock on 147 schools, it's great for some people, but be aware that when you go to 147 school, it's going to be 18, 24 months. And some of the aircraft you're going to be learning on is going to be older aircraft from the 60s and 70s. And you might dabble here and there with some, you know, uh, newer aircraft, some airline type aircraft, like a Boeing 727 or uh, 767. You might dabble into some of that or dabble a little bit with some, a business jet, like a Bombardier CRJ. You might dabble in that but you're going to be learning a lot with, with, with some of these, what they call bug beaters in the industry, the general aviation. So it says the 150s, just no 172s. And so just to be aware that you're going to be learning that. And if you talk to them about a prep course, you know, someone over six weeks and so they're going to try to drag you on to do their 18, 24 month, even though you have the experience, you have the tickets just to test out. So uh, there's that for the prep courses uh, for like code one, it's two weeks, a lot of studying and highly recommend kind of prepping before you come in. And for code one, we, we provide that material so you can get as much prep before you come in. And so you can have a successful experience here and we go home with your AMP pros. Time-wise, if you want to just, if it's something, you know, if the time is very important to you and you don't want to be in school for, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, 18 months, whatever it is, you know, this is, this is for you. Highly recommend it. Just know that you're going to be studying a lot in those two weeks because it's a lot of cramming. Uh, and unfortunately, you will learn, but, you know, one of the big knocks that we get is you really don't learn anything. You're, you're just you're, you're just studying the exam okay but that's what we a lot of us how we learned in our k through 12 school you're studying the exams you're and there's really not much practical stuff when you're on 147 school a lot of instructors uh, have admitted to me they just test the exam this is what you'll see in the exam this is what you'll see in the exam which nothing wrong with that but Prep schools are kind of looked down upon on the FAA and the industry because we're just teaching an exam. And for some people, that's what they want. 
some people that's why they're so popular because so many of uh, people with the experience already have had their hands dirty they've done some tech school they've done they've been around aircraft for a long time that they know how systems work they don't care what they want to hear from an engineering perspective of how electricity works they know how to troubleshoot they know how to use a multimeter and they want to just test out and that works but if you are the type of person that wants to go really deep into stuff maybe a uh, 147 schools for you but at a preps course that to prep you for the exam is that we're prepping you for the exam that's the purpose of the prep course and i wish that some of these prep uh, schools kind of kind of be proud of that and take some take some pride in, in helping these guys giving them what they want and to me i i i, I like I like that we can help them out and test out, prep them. Hey, this is how you do it. And all, you know, like myself, and I don't know the stats, but I would say obviously, and I, I looked at the stats of other schools and there's thousands of people that just want to get prepped and go on and uh, just move on with their life. We don't care about the 18, 24 months of teaching and lecturing from somebody wasting time doing that to us is wasting time. some is not but a prep course two three weeks you're in you're out get your a &P certificate get your credits get you know start putting on your resume you know because a lot of, for a lot of us it's it's a matter of time where is it worth it to, for my time to go to a prep school yes it's a lot of work but it's you know you only get views for two weeks so that's the pros and cons a lot of work. Uh, it's going to be some unorthodox stuff that uh, you're going to learn from us because we're prepping you for the exam. We're going to give you tools, the know-how, uh, some practical practicals to for you to be prepared for this exam, and so that you can go back and work on your multi-million dollar archives. You know, you don't care about these bug beaters, and that's completely fine. And they're, they're pretty cool. I highly recommend learning from some of those guys because you learn a lot more with those skills. But uh, if it's not your cup of tea, it's okay. You know, I'm here to help you have a successful life uh, after the, the military. That's that's my big mission. And if you get some college credits, awesome. You know, take it towards your degree. You know, you should pursue your degrees if you want to, if that's your avenue but for some of us schooling is not you know like myself it's not a big priority or nor is it something i really want a p process it's easier now than ever to talk to these uh FISDO guys because i haven't heard of any yet but most of them are only taking calls and are doing a zoom meeting kind of like this where You'll meet the person in front of you, the inspector, and he's gonna ask you a couple of questions. Some of those questions might be from the what I talked about earlier, the part 147, the appendix B, C, and D. And it might ask you a question out of that. What's your knowledge about you know, basic electricity? You just tell them, use a multimeter. No, I I said no. But he was like, okay, you know, and all he said was, hey, I, I you know. I recommend you, you know, study up on that. It's like, okay, thank you. That's that's it. The process is go on Google FAA FISDO or Flight Standards District Office, also known as FISDO. And what these guys are, what they do there, or well, one of their gigs there is to inspect every applicant and interview them, check their records to ensure that they meet the eligibilities for the, that the FAA has put in place. And those rules are for one rating, whether you're gonna go for your airframe or your power plant, for one rating, it's 18 months. For a lot of us who went to tech school, went to our first station, all that jazz is, it's 18 months, the time starts 
from the time that you got you arrived at your first station. And if some of us who stayed on the same base, but you moved on to your regular Air Force gig, you're out of training, now you're a regular Air Force member. The time starts there when you report. And that's usually the uh, rule of thumb there, is that when did you get to arrive station? Your time starts there until now you're requesting, you know, for your FAA. If you don't meet those 18 months, they'll tell you, well, sorry, you don't meet the eligibility yet. Come back to us when you reach the 18 months. And if you're trying to pursue both ratings, it's 30 months. So, but you, you have to have the practical experience on both. So if you've done engine runs, maybe changed out some hydraulic engine hydraulic driven pumps, some igniters, servicing, troubleshooting in there, but there's even electricity. Uh, all that counts towards your time, practical experience and changing out tires, changing out some hydraulic components, uh, servicing the aircraft, that all goes to that time. So remember you uh, make sure that all this stuff is documented because some of them, most of them will ask you send me your training documentation. Uh, I know in the Air Force, it's TBA. You download it, submit it to them. I apologize. I don't know what it is in the Army, but whatever that documentation for your training manager, provide it to them, send it to them, PDF form, and so they can look it over and look through your you know, documents. FISDO. F-S-D-O, Google that, and then it'll take you to a screen where you can choose a state, choose a state where you're in, your home record if you're overseas, and there's no fizzles overseas, unfortunately. But yeah, let's say you're from Texas, like I am. You go to Texas, home record, cool. Or if your family, if you're in Korea, but you have family in, say, Florida, look for the, the nearest FISDO there and and uh, they should be able to help you out. And if they're being jerks, go to the one, go to the other one, go to you know, the home of record. And if they're jerks, uh, DFW is some nice people. Uh, the one in Salt Lake City is, a, is an Air Force Reserve, I believe. And you can talk to some of the guys there and they'll help you out. No reason to deal with um, buttholes in the in the industry now that, that you can basically talk to anybody. You can go do that. And I have yet to met or hear of anybody doing it in person. They're still all locked up and doing the virtual thing. So that's your first step: is visiting the FISDO and getting your FAA form eighty six ten dash two. And if you go through the, like we talked about before, the DOD's a &P program, getting your certificate of eligibility, you can use that to go test. And every test you take, every center you go to to do an FAA exam, gotta take these forms with you. Don't forget about it. Don't go, don't go over there empty-handed. Take your ID and these forms and you can, you can uh, start on your exams. So that's the first step. Second step, you know, decide what you're going to do. You're going to study from home, just knock it out yourself and do this deal. Uh, what is it called? A D D I Y do it yourself type of deal. Nothing wrong with that. Get, make sure you get some study materials, the books, uh, the DOD a &P program is a, is a good option because you're learning all the concepts. Uh, but it's a large question bank. So even though that you learn some of the concepts, but you don't know the questions and answers. And there's books out there like ASA, Prepware, Jepson's, uh, aircraft tech books and things like that uh, that can help you. And study it up, take your exams. You can go sign up for PSI and look for your nearest testing facility, boom. Um, but if you're trying to do it and you're trying to do it yourself, you know, Air Force School can help you out with it. They can pay for the, the fees for the FAA exams. You can do that part. 
And yeah, so first you got to do once you once you're ready for the exams, go on PSI, look for the, the nearest testing center. This is for the people who are doing it for yourself. Go on PSI and look for the nearest one or one that you feel comfortable with. Go there, knock it out. You got if you're doing airframe and power plant, there's three exams you gotta take. Everybody has to take the general, whether you're going for one rating or two. General will be your first one. And then if you're doing uh, airframe, study for your airframe exam or and take your airframe exam. If you're doing power plant, obviously you study for the power plant and take your power plant exam. And remember, take your tickets with you. After you do that, after you take out your written exams, then move on to uh, study for your orals and practicals. And ASA has the materials, the Jepsons has materials, and that craft tech company has materials. I've heard of Glam Aviation, King's School of Aviation. They have uh, excellent study materials, use those and to help you out if you're doing the DIY uh, road. And if you're doing the prep course, we provide that, they can guide you through everything so that you can just focus on just studying, knocking it out and not worrying about next steps and things like that. So there's just, that's another uh, pro to NP course. They take out all the guesswork and just hold your hand through the process basically. All right, study for this, study for that, study for this, go here. You have a, you are scheduled with this guy and you can uh, take your exam to you leave with your a &P. Study materials. These are some study materials. We got flashcards for all the written exams right here. And this is from Professional Pursuit, covering all you know, 400 questions per category. So uh, with power plant, general airframe, and there's one for avionics. Uh, our own study material that we put together. And then there's the FAA material that FAA wants you to study. So here's the airframe book. There's two volumes. Well, there's actually two volumes to power plant as well. But I know there's another book like this size. So they want you to study two size, two books of this size of, you know, you don't know where the questions are coming from, you know, and they just want you to study this whole thing in and out, hands on and, if you're on a time crunch, it's just not practical for you. It's not pragmatic for you to, it's great, great information on there, no knock on it. And you can actually either have the book or you can actually go on the FAA's website and download this whole thing. Pretty cool book, actually, you know, good information on here, but it's very, it just goes over really in depth some of this stuff. and. You decide if it's if it's valuable to you. But here's a general book, a lot of great information, but at the same time, uh, there's a lot of information on there that you need to know so you can pass the exam. Will you use it? A lot of people will debate that no, you don't want you. Actually, a lot of people will say that a lot of information in there you don't use. And then you got two volumes of power plant. Let's see. And this is some stunning materials um, that so the prep, the fast track books will cover. And a lot of people say ASA books are the best. Some people say Jepsons. And in my personal opinion, um, ASA and prep or are very good for written exams, uh, but no book, no publication out there is 100%. 
FAA stopped publishing them publicly uh, a few years ago, and no book is 100% accurate. So with that, there's going to be some questions that you might you might invest in 20 bucks on a book, and you thought that you know this is I just remember the questions and answers and that's it, and nothing wrong with that. It's just that don't be surprised when you walk into the into the test center and some of the questions weren't on it. When you open up the exam, you start going through the material, and some of that stuff is not on your book. You do not see it anywhere. So um, don't be surprised at that. So because no book is 100%, we're trying to we try to minimize that as much as possible. But you know, we still get students who come back. I was like, yeah, some of these questions weren't weren't, weren't in our study material. So yeah, it's unfortunately that's you know we we try to minimize that as much as possible. And here's another one. 4313, the Bible for the general aviation. And it's a great book. You might be using it during your practicals because it's an open book test, but um, it's, it's a lot of study material when you can just study the, you're trying to do it yourself and just study the exam. There's resources out there for you. And ASA is pretty good, prep for is pretty good. I highly recommend prep for because it gives you a metric. If you're getting better, worse, uh, and if you're improving, so it gives you that. Jepson, Jepsons are amazing for, for the, the oral questions. The Jepsons are almost verbatim from what I've heard. Uh, very helpful and you can always, uh, feel confident with that, with that book. I didn't like Jepson's for the written's, but I really like Jepson's for the orals. And that's super important. And we provide both, you know, SA, Prepware and the Jepson's. And we reimburse people for using the Prepware because we, you know, we want to see a metric. It gives us a clear cut of where you are, um, if you're improving. And we, if you're doing this by yourself, you know, if you're scoring 85 or higher on the study mode, you know, and you test with 85 or above them, when you go on test mode, after you've done the study sections, then 85 or above is usually a good rule of thumb that you should pass your exam with at least a 70. I usually do both the book and the app because it gives you different methods of studying. You, you're looking at your reading, it stretches it out, let your brain out a little bit, and then you can measure yourself with the app. So you see where, you're, where, you're, where, you're, where you stand. Using that combination of both, it's a little more pricey, yes, but it's definitely worth it. And usually we have students do both. And I don't recommend doing your own flashcards. There's Quizlet is a good source for you to study for for uh, your oral questions because it's digital you can just tap on the screen and it flips a card over for you you know of course think about the question think about the answer and then tap on it and then it can also also track how many of those cards you miss because if you do the hands the handwrite your own stuff you'll be there for days you know, just depending on the time, save yourself time in your in your hand. I know I used to draw. I got this little callus on my middle finger, and you'll develop that if you're handwriting your own notes, your own flashcards. So if you want to save your hands, getting calloused, uh, get go on Quizlet, Jepson oral questions, and uh, study on there. So that's it for study you know study material. I hope this was valuable to you and please like, share, share with your buddies, you know, and because these are the most common frequently asked questions that I get and it's a good, good little nuggets. Go always reach out to me on Instagram, on Conan MX, 
or you know, book a, you know, go on our website. And if you still want to talk further, you know, book a call on there, and you have one on one with me. We can uh, create a game plan with you. So go on code one. One of the first things you'll see is a little link to book a call, and let's talk. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, we can create a a, a war plan for you to execute, schedule something, and help you through this entire process. And even if you don't come through us, you know, if you want to get some information, talk about, hey, should I do this? You know, yourself, I can hook you up with a test center. We can look up a test center for you, and or help you go through a process. Cool. So that's it. That's all I have. Uh, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, and please again share this information. It is much needed because I didn't get it in 14 years, and this needs to go out. This we need to grow the awareness on this. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Really, really appreciate it. And I'll continue to make these videos to provide the information. I'll keep on harping, saying the same uh, dance and song. Thank you and have a good one. Take care. Bye.